Do you think it's weird that we put serial killers to death? No. No? Okay. It's just... No, just hear me out. I only ask because somebody got to kill all them and it's usually the same person. So isn't an executioner just a serial killer that made it? Like, isn't he just like the industry plant of serial killers? Like, maybe not. I'm just asking questions. I, don't know. I okay. Oh. <laughs> Y'all probably won't like this. Okay. <laughs> I saw this story and it blew my mind. I, I still can't get over it. Okay. There was a, there was a guy in, I think it was Indianapolis in the 60s maybe. And he was essentially like, uh, you know, they didn't really have the words for it back then, but he was a serial killer, you know? And he, he killed and I think he even, like, I think he killed and ate, eight women, right? And... Um, they caught him because uh, he just got sloppy. He became a hoarder, you know what I mean? And like, I mean, it was pretty easy. Once they walked in, they were like, there is evidence everywhere. <laughs> I am stepping in evidence right now. This is crazy. And so then they, you know, gave him the perp walk and newspaper took his picture and everything. And then they were interviewing, they did a bunch of follow-ups and they were interviewing his, um, his friends and, you know, family and stuff like that. And then they interviewed one woman who he went on a date with between uh, number four and number five. And, and she was like, uh, we actually, I thought we had a great time and went back to his place. And then he, you know, was being all rude and everything. And then he ended up kicking me out. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. As I was reading it, I was like, is she mad she didn't get eaten? It's hard to get context through text sometimes, but she just sounds so indignant. I'm like, wait. She doesn't even sound like, oh, thank goodness. She's like, what's wrong with me? Like, why, like. All right, I'm delicious, okay? I bit my lip the other day and it was fire, all right? You don't know what you missed. But yeah, she said that, you know, went back to his place. They were, they were chatting and everything. And then like, I don't know, he just, all of a sudden he was all rude and stuff and then and ended up being like, I think it's best if you just go home. You know I mean? and, and there was a part of me that was like, look, maybe, maybe they were having a great date, great conversation, and then whatever was so special about this woman, he was like, I can't do it, I can't. I, 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 she's too good of a person, like, I, I gotta get her away from me, let me be rude, let me like, let me just kick her out, something like that, you know, save her from me. <laughs> but then the other part of me was like, no, I think this is the most annoying person that's ever lived. <laughs> I think this dude is a serial killer and he brought this woman home to kill her, maybe eat her, and then she just, at a certain point, the conversation's going so poorly, he's like, I can't even eat this bitch. Like, this <laughs> Like showed a picture of her kissing her cat on the mouth or something. He was like, "Ugh, uh, uh." Some things are just disgusting. All right. <laughs> Sometimes I, I I really worry uh, badly that uh, that we're like as as people that we're lost. And that um, one of the reasons we're lost is that we don't really have any more like, heroes to look up to. I mean, some people have heroes, but then the hero's like an actor, and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> you want to be like the guy that pretends? <laughs> you know what I mean? And just, I, I, I was thinking about it for a while um, over the weekend. Because what we used to have was very little access to anyone we considered a hero. And because of that lack of access, 
if you really wanted to know about this person, if they became famous enough in their own lifetime, there'd be a person that came, a writer that came and followed them around for years, maybe decades, and then they wrote a biography. And we didn't even give a second thought to how biased it probably was or, or how much the writer may have come to love this person. We were just like, okay, wow, what a great, what a, what a great human. But that's a problem. I don't even think that we, everyone makes it seem like Gen Z or Gen X or like millennials, all this stuff like that are so different. I don't think we are. I think every generation of people has always been hopelessly human. And now we just see all of it. That's what's so scary now is that there, there are great leaders that may not get the chance because we already saw them not be like worthy. You know what I mean? We find out a lot of the stuff we find out about people now that we think are great after they died. And now we see all the stuff, we see all the mistakes happen in real time and it makes people harder to follow. Do you really think you would have followed MLK if he did the Tide Pod Challenge? <laughs> Do you think if a young MLK in high school was like, oh, all right, uh, this, this is Martin here. Uh, <laughs> we about to see what it do. <laughs> And then five years later, he's like, march with me. They might beat our ass, but come on. <laughs> no, no. I'm, t I'm scared that's what's happening right now. I think that there's, a, there's a, a brilliant, young, young, but smart. Smart for her age, wise old soul. There's an there's a incredible person out there right now. A young, young Angela Davis right now. Twerking. <laughs> And like, uh, like feet on the wall too, like nasty stuff. <laughs> and then 20 years from now, when she's ready to lead a revolution, there are gonna be people that are like, this you? <laughs> this you with the booty? It's like, yeah, it was a different time. It's like, nah, nah I've seen it now. Yeah, this is tough. That's what we're all like. That's, that's what's so scary. It's like that's why, that's why it takes so much faith to follow a person. But it's hard to have faith when you've just been exposed to all this stuff. I'll, I'll tell you what. I was I was in uh, a TSA line behind someone. I won't say who it was, but it was someone who I respect very much for her work. Right. Um, and this didn't change how I felt about her. It's just what peaked this idea in my head. Okay. Uh, she was in line ahead of me in TSA, and both of our bags got flagged, right? And so then they were doing her bag first, but I was standing kind of like near her because my bag was next. And I was like looking at my bag being like, what did I do? You know what I mean? Because like, when they flag it, you're like, I don't own a gun or anything. So like, what could this possibly be? And it's always water. It's water every time. It's water. Every single time it is water. But in my mind, I'm like, I'm like, okay, I have a, I, I, there's no way I could have let my box cutter fall into my backpack. Like, and like, and also when, you're fla when your bag gets flagged and you're just like black, you do just start wondering what could happen. You're like, all right, but could somebody have put something in my bag while I wasn't looking? Or like, start adding up the jail time and everything. I'm like, so I'm standing next to her. And then, um, they open up her bag and there's a buzzing. And, and so the guy is like, is like terrified, right? Because as soon as he unzips the bag, cause he, at first he's like chill. He's like that deadpan, like, are there any sharp objects or things that could hurt me when I put my hand in? She was like, no. And then she, she's like staring at the bag while he's unzipping it. And then there's a buzzing and the buzzing is like really strong. And, and it's, bu and it's buzzing so hard, now he has to look and he's like, do you know what that could be? And she's like, no, I have no idea what that could be. And, and she's like, my alarm is on my phone, I don't know what that could be. And so now this dude, and this, this is where you could tell that TSA doesn't get trained. <laughs> they don't get trained for the bad stuff to really happen like that. And so then TSA, this dude over here, the bag is right here, right? This man puts, puts a back foot, like he get, like he. <laughs> he took a step back and bent his knees like he would run. And I'm like, but then what are we supposed to, cause you're not telling us to back up. 
and you're not calling for backup. You just over here unzipped it through the flap. Of... And then he starts taking some of her clothes out and everything, takes some of it. And like, when I tell you, like, look, I know it's gonna sound like I'm being hyperbolic, but I'm being like genuine. When he goes to lift like another clump of clothes, cause you know, they're not careful when they do this. They're not like, oh, you folded everything so neatly. I'll just take three shirts at a time and move them out of the bag. They just grab and... And so he goes to grab, and when he when he ended up grabbing, what he grabbed was was whatever was buzzing. And so then it was in his hand for a second, and then this man audibly screamed, right? So then, so then he over here grabbing stuff out of her bag, and then he grabs it, and he, you can and you can hear it gets louder when it's in his hand, and it, he pulls up, and he's like, and he's like. Oh, oh. And then this, this vibrator went to town on that table. I've never said, cause it, cause it was, okay. I don't, I don't know how she used it. This seemed like, maybe I'm just vanilla, but I wouldn't be able to handle something like this because it was jumping on. So it wasn't just moving along the table. It wasn't just, this thing was fully like, This motherfucker started break dancing on the table. And then she was like, oh, that's my, he's like, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. And now he got, now he got his gloves, but then in, even with the, even, even with the gloves, he seems scared to touch it, right? So then he gets it and like, <laughs> I'm not acting like I would have known how to turn it off right away. But this really was getting away from him. Like, it really was, like, like, he finally grabbed it and he over here. I've never seen someone try to do police brutality on a bike, because he tried to beat the, she tried to choke the life out of it. And then he finally accidentally turns it off. And he breathing all hard, like, Is there anything else in there? <laughs> and she was like, no, that's the only one. And he's like, all right, you're good to go. Puts in, then he, and this, it did make me laugh at the moment. Like, so not only did he put it back in the suitcase, but then he really like, put her clothes back like he was trying to kill it. Like he was like... <laughs> And I'm, when, I, when I bring the story up, I'm, like I said, it didn't make me judge her as a person. I still very much respect her. I'm just saying, if she were to lead a revolution tomorrow, I'd be like, all right, but are we going vibrator first? Cause like, I just know that about you now. You know? I hope that's gonna lead the charge. <laughs> Um, you all have been phenomenal. Thank you so much. I'm Josh Johnson. You have a good night.